Widow spiders are some of the most venomous and, because of that, widely feared spiders in the world. But, as with many of the world's most boldly colored and toxic creatures, there are a multitude of harmless widow spider lookalikes, some of which are probably near your house right now. If you live in the southern US, chances are you've heard stories about the beautiful but highly toxic red widow spider. Today, we are in southern Florida to investigate whether the red colored widow like spiders popping up there really are red widows or simply a harmless lookalike. Thankfully, I didn't have to step too far from my front door to find one of these red spiders. Oh, the big female is out. I cannot move this too much because even the slightest little vibration might scare her. But check this out. Look at that. All right, children, this absolutely gorgeous spider that's crawling on me right now is not a red widow like you might think it is, but it is a close relative and a very similar looking species. This is the red house spider, which is a member of the same family as the red widow spider, known as cobweb spiders. And at first glance, I can see why many people might mistake this for a red widow spider. With red legs and a red prosoma for that first body segment that contains the eyes, as well as a dark opisthosoma with little white speckles, the opisthosoma being that abdominal segment, as well as having very similar body and leg proportions to widow spiders, and a very similar looking face and eye arrangement as well. This red house spider's resemblance to the red widow spider is really surprising. However, there are a few ways that I could tell that this is not a red widow spider, but a red house spider. First of all, and probably the most obvious, is the habitat difference. I am in not only a very urbanized area, but literally my own front door. And while I've heard many people say that they think they've seen red widows in and around their house, especially people in the southeastern United States, that is just most likely not true unless you're out here living in the middle of the palmetto scrub. But if you still think that you do have a red widow in or around your house, there are a few ways, besides habitat preference, that you can tell the difference between the red house spider and the red widow spider. First of all, the red house spider has relatively shorter legs compared to its body size than the red widow does, which has very long and spindly legs compared to its body. Second of all, red house spiders do not grow nearly as large as red widow spiders do. This is pretty much a fully grown female right here, and the females are larger than the males, so this is about as large as the red house spider will ever get. Also, the red house spider's red coloration is a lot duller than that of the red widow spider. As you can see, this is more of a dark brick red kind of color, whereas true red widows range from a bright reddish orange to a deep red, but never this kind of dull brick red color. On the topic of the boldness of the coloration, the patterning on the opisthosoma is also a little bit different. While the red house spider does have white spots and streaks, that does not compare to the patterns that can be found on the opisthosoma of the red widow spider, which are these big red circles outlined in white. As you can see, there's no red on the abdomen of this spider at all, just black and white. Now the last key difference, and the one that most people seem to be worried about, is the venom toxicity. Red widow venom is significantly more toxic than red house spider venom, and can still cause some pretty intense effects at the local site, or maybe even some mild systemic effects whereas the venom of the red house spider is harmless to humans. And while the red widow spider is arguably the rarest spider in the southeastern United States as a whole, the red house spider is among one of the most common spiders to find in urban areas in the southeastern US, especially in Florida and Texas. And while there are plenty of other medically significant species like the black and brown widows that can be found in and around urban areas, there is no need to worry about the red widow being found anywhere near your house. While we're on about that, we might as well go and find a red widow. So I'm gonna have to put this red house spider back and let's head out into the deep depths of the Florida scrubs of central Florida to try and find one of the rarest spiders in the United States. We literally just learned about the red house spider right at my own front door. But notice this change of scenery. We're in an extremely well-preserved Florida scrub habitat far from any human civilization in search for the actual red widow spider so we could learn how to tell the difference between the red widow spider and the red house spider that you've probably seen in your house before. Now that we're out in the Florida scrub, 
The best way to find a red widow spider is to look for signs of their webbing on their favorite plant to nest on, the saw palmetto. This spider is so rare though, that entire parts of the sandy ground coated in saw palmetto might not even have a single red widow in them. Thankfully, we managed to find some webbing on a short saw palmetto, so let's see what's inside. All right, children, right in this palm frond right here, if you could see all this webbing around here, this is the web of a red widow spider, a real red widow spider, which is a species that is actually completely endemic to these very pristine scrub habitats like the one around me. You will not see this like anywhere near civilization. They are super picky when it comes to their habitat and they almost completely nest in saw palmetto trees out in these pine and white sand scrub environments in central and a little bit of southern Florida, nowhere else in the entire world. So the reason I can tell that this is a true red widow spider and not the red house spider, besides just habitat alone, is also the fact that there are these extremely noticeable circles on her abdomen that are bordered in like kind of a yellowish white color and are red filled through the middle. Whereas the red house spider only has some white spots on the abdomen, but not the big circles on the abdomen. Also, the red on the red widow is just this beautifully contrasting red. It is one of the brightest reds you'll ever see just out in nature. Whereas the red house spider is more of a reddish orangish color. It's still a nice red color, but it's not the brilliant red legs and prosoma or that head and thorax like segment of the beautiful red widow. Now, those aren't the only differences between the red house spider and the red widow. Of course, the red house spider, like I said before, is harmless to humans. Whereas the red widow spider has a venom that is comparable in toxicity to some rattlesnake species, which is just crazy to think about. No need to worry. Even though I said that the species' venom is comparable to that of rattlesnakes, there is no need to be scared of getting bitten by a red widow because number one, these things are extremely secluded. As you can see, they are very secretive living in these palm trees and can only be found in one very specific kind of habitat throughout the entire world. And two, these things are so small, they weigh less than a rattlesnake's venom glands entirely. So this thing has like a droplet of its venom inside of it. The effects will not be as large as a rattlesnake. Plus, this thing, you would actually need to startle it in some way for it to bite you. Now, even though the Red Widow is basically a 0% chance to be found in or around your house, there are some other Widow species with similar or even more toxic venom than the Red Widow that can be found in and around houses. But if you think you have a Red Widow in your house, there is no need for any worries. All right. Let's leave this beautiful Red Widow alone. She actually has egg sacs, so I don't wanna bother her too much, but let's leave this absolutely gorgeous spider alone. I hope you enjoyed learning how to tell the difference between the harmless Red House Spider and the venomous, but still technically harmless Red Widow. If you enjoyed this video, then make sure to check out this video right here, where we find an actually highly toxic Widow species that can be found in and around houses. Enjoy.